Hey people, this is Bram from Tutorial Clarity, and I am proud to bring you the introduction to my new series of tutorials on CSS. That is right, the almighty CSS. It's about time. So if you've made it through all my, uh, my previous tutorials on HTML and Photoshop, congratulations. We are now going to start making websites look pretty. Even Chuck Norris approves of CSS. Alright. So in this introduction, I'm basically going to be showing you the flow of things and how they work in CSS. Um, I'm not going to go too in-depth, it's just going to be a general overview. But, uh, yeah, let's get started. So you're probably asking the question, alright Graham, what is CSS? Well, CSS stands for, uh, and before I say this, I should note, as always, you can follow along in Notepad. You do not need anything special for CSS whatsoever. So, that is a big benefit to it as well. You don't need to download anything. Um, I always suggest that you use Dreamweaver, but if you really are forced to use Notepad or some other kind of text editor, feel free. Anyway, um, so what is CSS? Well, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. And that's basically uh, what it is. It's almost like a tree and it branches out in terms of the elements that they affect and uh... it's really it's a great thing you can get into parents and children and parent elements children elements children of children elements kind of a thing and uh... you can get really detailed into things that you have the ability to edit and manipulate but that's basically what it is a cascading style sheet so um... what are the benefits of css uh, too many to name, actually. Um, if you're going through your websites today and you are still just using HTML, and if you ever want to edit something like the font color down here, you just keep typing style equals font family, and then Arial, and then uh, font color, or font, let's just say color in general color, you want to choose the color, and then the font, yeah, you want to make the size like 26 pixels, and you can get really detailed, but you know what, that gets really annoying having to type that out every time you want to update something like this. What if you wanted to update all that all at once on every single one of your pages on your website? You know, you get an email from a client and he says, you know, I really don't like the font color or I really don't like the background image. Is there any way we can change the hover state of the navigation? Is there any way we can change the color? Can we make it an image? Um, it, and you're like, ah, oh, you know, man, that's going to take so much oh, extra work. But it's actually not. It's not going to take any extra work at all on your part. That's our little secret. Um, it could actually, <laughs> if you actually understand CSS and you have a really good uh, comprehension of it, it can take you all of 30 seconds, probably. 30 seconds to a minute. Sometimes uh, you do go overboard. Anyway, that is what I'm talking about. So let's get a little more in depth into CSS in this introduction. In depth into CSS in this introduction. A little contradictory there. So, where do you put the CSS? Well, there are two options you can do. Really, there's three, but uh, because that one I just showed you includes CSS, but that's what we're trying to veer away from. The two real options are having an external style sheet, which means you have a CSS file, and the other option is that you had it have it up at the head of your page. That's inside your head tag, and that is actually what one <laughs> one of the benefits of your head tag. You can include your JavaScript and your CSS style sheets inside of that head tag. So uh, this doesn't get displayed on the page whatsoever. Only the effects of the code do. So just to actually show you what I'm talking about, um, if I actually preview this thus far, you can see there it is. Um, this is our CSS introduction title. I think I actually have one over here too, CSS introduction, I'll just close that. 
CSS introduction title, and it's a pretty bland website. This this doesn't have any CSS in it whatsoever, but you can see, maybe if we just hop back over here, uncomment our CSX CS whoops CSS section. That was bound to happen. You guys know it. And I refresh the page. Now look at that. Suddenly we're able to hover over these elements and they're very responsive, instantaneous actually at that. Um, and our background color, it loads very fast because all we need is one thin image that repeats along that x the x-axis, which I will talk about in a tutorial in specific. But uh, it's the whole thing about CSS is it's very fast and it's very efficient. And it can slow, or it can actually speed up, I'm sorry, it can speed up the load times of your clients or the people that go to your website. So what if you wanted to change the text of this down here, all of this at once, say this is text on one page and then you have an about us page and this is text on there, contact us page, that's text on there, I mean, you name it, the list goes on. Well, if you have all your text with an ID attached to the text or the font or the, the paragraph tag in your HTML, that's what the ID is for, by the way, in JavaScript and CSS, manipulation of the content, hint, hint. So if you attach something, like I have main text attached to this, I can come back up here in CSS, and if I simply add a number sign, now guys, I know this is really difficult, but uh, you're just going to have to you're gonna have to bear with me. You type main text, the name of your ID, and then a curly bracket to open it, and a curly bracket to close it. And what do you want to do? You want to change the color. So this is the tough part. This is the difficult part, guys. This is what you're getting paid the big bucks for. Color, colon, space, and what's this? Dreamweaver actually lets me choose a color? That is interesting. Okay, and we'll end it with a semicolon, and then we'll save the document, we'll load Mozilla back up, refresh, and what do you know? All the text at once is now manipulated. You don't have to individually change anything whatsoever. <sighs> I love CSS, because this in particular does not look too amazing. But uh, once you actually understand Photoshop, graphics design techniques, maybe you gain a little bit of experience, and you understand CSS, you start to gain an eye for these things. Um, let me give you an introduction as to what I'm talking about. What type of sites can you make? Well, I'm working on this site right now, and uh, I actually had to go through about four different color schemes for the user interface. But you will notice it's very fast, it's very responsive, and it's completely... CSS controlled, which is very nice. I mean, the the input fields. I had a form element. That's or that's right. I had a form element tutorial. If you guys want to check that out, these are all form elements. By the way, you know all the ones: text elements, text elements, drop down, option elements, everything, and a submit button. But I just made the submit button actually an image with CSS, and you'll notice how fast it didn't take any time whatsoever to download that image to change the hover state of the image because uh, it's just a CSS technique of repeating images preloading images but that we'll discuss in more tutorials um, how to manipulate form elements and change the hover states um, I like the high contrast hover state it makes things appear a lot more responsive in my opinion but uh hey the world is your oyster uh, here's another one I got this is e-imagesite.com and it's a hosting website and uh, pretty much everything is done in CSS if I click log out processes and there we go so a lot of it is jQuery I'm not gonna lie a lot of it is jQuery and PHP and I am gonna have tutorials on those two particular languages after the CSS series is done uh, you know you click the login button nice little panel drops down you got your login password Login button. If you need to register, you can click the register button. You need to collapse the panel, bring it back up. 